So guys, uh, once once again and once more, uh, now it's uh, time time for near uh, Kaufman. There are no bad practices or how to code for humans, not computers. Yeah, thank you very much. I was worried a little bit because you made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my, my fault. Can you see me? Can you see my code? Can you see my screen? You are my only feedback. Yep. All working. All right. Nice avatar. All right. All right, guys. So uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for having me uh, for uh, yet another uh, great event, JS Poland. And thank you for keeping this uh, amazing conference alive in these uh, very strange times. And like I said yesterday, I had opportunities to talk at NG Poland uh, as well, is that I hope that in 2021, we can meet again in person and, you know, and come back to normal, to a new, new normal. Uh, well, let's talk about my talk. So my title for today is Code for Humans. Now, usually, if you've seen one of my talks before, because I'm kind of like, like to get around and, and, and talk about stuff, uh, usually I like to uh, get deep into some technical issue, uh, show some, some interesting implementation for a common use case, explore APIs, whatever it's, uh, it's uh, a framework or just, you know, um, vanilla JavaScript. So I like to get technical, that's, that's my thing. But today, I, I wanna, I wanna give a, a, a kind of a different talk. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be a little bit different to me because usually, like I said, I like to write a lot of code, but today I'm gonna try to, uh, um, let you hear some of my opinions. Hope you're gonna like it. So let's get started. First of all, my name. I'm Nir Kaufman. I work at the company called 500 Tech. Uh, and if you want to know everything about me, you can visit nir.live. Um, because I don't want to tell you all of my <laughs> life story right now. Uh, but if you're interested, please visit. Uh, you're also going to find links in near.life for uh, uh, codes, slides, uh, how to uh, keep in touch. And basically, I don't have any privacy, so you can find everything about me. Uh, just a disclaimer, a quick disclaimer. Uh, this talk contains a lot of opinions. I'm not considered myself uh, the guru of writing code. Uh, I'm writing code for a lot of years now, I think almost 20, but, and I keep learning and this is an amazing journey. So there is no one truth. So I just wanna, just wanna make it clear before we start. All right, uh, let's start. All right, who cares about your code? So you care about your code. When I say you, I mean, developers, I care about my code, but apparently that no one else care about the code itself. I mean, stakeholders, uh, stakeholders don't care about the code. They care about the product. They care about getting the product out fast. They care about uh, making the product uh, valuable to make money, obviously. Stakeholders don't care about the code itself. Uh, actually, your managers don't care about the code. I'm not talking about the technical managers. I'm talking about the, the next level of management. They don't care about the code. Again, they care about the product. They care about getting it fast. They care about implementing new features fast enough and make it stable and make it useful and make money out of it. All right. The most important thing, uh, the users don't care about the code. By the end of, you know, the, at the end of each software, there is a user. By the end of this, someone clicking some buttons, someone using a piece of software to solve a problem. And this someone don't care about the code. In my classes, I have a nice thing that, that sometimes I like to, I like to show my students. I'm showing them my phone and I'm telling them on my phone, on my mobile device, I've got plenty of applications. Choose one of them. Some of them were written in native Android. Some of them were written with Ionic. 
which is uh, which is a, a framework for building hybrid uh, web view based uh, applications some of them were written with react native and at least one of them was written with flutter different technologies different languages different way to implement if you can identify and you can tell me which one of the apps written on which technology well i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to quit today honestly all right it's almost impossible users care about one thing think about yourself as users we care about if the product if the application is fast is useful is solving us a problem in an easy way if i click it and it open and it runs and is doing what whatever it needs to do I'm fine with it. You can write it with PHP. I don't care. I don't even know what is a programming language. So it seems like that no one cares about, about the code except us. So what, what does it mean? So I want to make another statement. And I know it's a very bold statement, but uh, try, try to get, uh, get into my head. I think performance is overrated. Yeah, obviously, we want to build apps that run fast. All right? Yeah, that for sure. Each one of us want to build software that run fast. But what's the price for it? To make it fast, what's the effort? How complicated is the process? How unreadable is the code that we're going to write? How it's going to affect the implementation detail? How it's going to affect the entire workflow? Well, I don't care. I want my software to run fast. Do whatever you need to do. That's our craft as developers. We build fast and reliable softwares. All right. But let's talk about different kind of softwares in the context of performance. Let's talk about Amazon. And Amazon, well, if it's not fast enough, they're going to lose a lot of money. If someone wants to buy something and it's click a button and they need to wait for three seconds, well, it's a very bad experience. And actually, there are some researches that shows that every millisecond count and cost a lot of money. Let's talk about an application of being used in emergency rooms, in hospitals. Someone got into, into the ER. The doctor needs to get all the information about this person. He's clicking his ID into the computer and it's take five minutes to get, uh, to get the information he needs in order to, to know about his, uh, uh, medical history that might be a matter of life and death i mean hopefully this software is fast enough but let's talk about an internal software in banks for example i'm standing in front of the of uh, of my uh, uh, bank counter and he said all right let me just get your details and well it took two seconds is it fast enough well, I think in case of, a, of an internal bank system, it's not a big deal if the user going to wait for two seconds instead of, I don't know, one second. I don't think it's a big deal. Now, bank systems are very complicated. There is a lot, of, a lot of things going on in the background. A lot of API calls, a lot of data. Well, I want it to be reliable. I want it to be stable. But not, I'm not going to compromise this just because I want to make it super fast. If making it super fast is going to cost me in more effort, it's going to make the whole process slower. Well, I don't care because two seconds in this use case, it's not a matter of life and death like an ER software. And, and, and it's not a matter of millions, potentially millions of dollars in case of Amazon. So code, the code itself, the code that we write, the code that we type every day as developers, this is an implementation details eventually. We've got, we've got emotions. We look at our code and we, and, and we, we attach to it. We spend most of our time choosing the right font, the right color, the right theme for IDE, the IDE that we're going to use, the spaces or tabs or whatever, uh, specifically in TypeScript, all right? We look at our code and we like to think and consider it as a piece of art. Uh, the sad truth is that code is not art, right? Code is instructions. 
Uh, I like this picture. I borrowed this picture from. Uh, it, it's being used in a very good book that I'm going to recommend at the end, and it's get around the internet. Uh, I couldn't find the uh, the the copyright though, so so sorry about that. But uh, when I publish the slides, I'm going to find it and give the give you know the credits. Uh, the only <laughs> valid. Oh, sorry. The only valid measurement of code quality is. WTF per minute. All right, <laughs> look at this for a second. Good code or bad code? Oh, and it's all some to this. I really like this this picture. I think it's got a lot of uh, a lot of truth hidden hidden behind the joke. All right. I'm working a lot with the community and a lot of junior developers. That there is this discussion. So I want to be what what's gonna make me a better developer how what's the difference between a senior developer code and a junior developer code well first of all machine code meant for machines javascript like uh, and a lot of other languages is a high level programming language this high level programming language meant for us for humans it should be readable and understandable the computer doesn't need it, don't need it. If you want to write instructions for a computer, you can write machine code directly. Well, you can try, but it's gonna, it's gonna be not that easy. That's the way we used to do it before we invented the high level programming language. All right. Let's, let's do a, let's do something interesting. Here's a short story. Wendy went there, collected all the accessories and returned everything. Can you tell me where Wendy went to? Can you tell me something about accessories? Can you tell me what she returned? Well, I guess the answer is going to be no. And if you read this short story, you'll find yourself very confused. But again, sometimes when I'm doing some code reviews, I can see something like this, like uh, const data equals get all Believe it or not, I mean, now we look at it in the context of this talk and you say, well, no one write code like this. All of us do. Let's do another nice trick, all right? Can you help me with this problem? Please go to the storage and bring me this item. You get the ideas. We don't talk like this. We don't write instructions for humans like this. We are not talking in this level of abstractions. We are being very specific if we want something to be done but we are not translated it into our code. Alert, in a street in this city, a house is on fire. Please avoid from driving this road. This is not acceptable as a, as a, as a news alert, all right? I can't do anything with this information. Well, I can. I can make some phone calls and go to the internet and try to understand what's going on and get some, some information, but come on. Just give me the street number, tell me which city it is, tell me which house I'm talking about, and give me some, some more information in this news flash. Don't get me on the phone trying to gather some more information. Well, I, I think I can skip these slides because this is machine code. No one can understand this. So humans and machines don't speak the same language, all right? We all know this as developers. Hopefully, all of us familiar with this fact, we just keep forgetting it. High-level programming language means for us, which means that readability is the, own, the one and only goal. It's all about readability. It's just readability, nothing more. Let me do something very quick and then, then uh, I'll show you some, some, some more ideas. Let's say that you've got code like this. You've got an array of records, all right? Uh, and you've got some kind of a function that doing something like this. So let's do a function uh, is or just a validate which accept a record, but we're going to call it R, and it's return. Uh, let's say if R dot value is greater than 50. And then I'm going to write uh, some code that looks like this. Let me paste you a snippet that I prepared from you. All right, all based on true stories. 
let's look at this code for a second. But you know what? I'm going to change this, this method name. I'm going to call it is valid. And well, I'm going to specify this is a record. And here it's going to be a record value. And here we're just going to do is valid. Now, if you look at this piece of code, uh, probably you've got some different opinions on it. Um, I think it's simple enough. But what's going on here? How fast can you explain me what's going on in reduce? Now you can argue with me and you can say, well, if you don't understand what is reduce, if you don't, uh, if you don't realize and guess that ACC, it's, it's accumulator and current, it's the next item. Well, you should learn JavaScript better. You should become a better developer because this code is short. This code, when I'm a senior developer, I wrote a lot of JavaScript. I totally understand what's going on here. And I don't agree. I think that even though there is not too much code here, and even though I can read it line by line and use my knowledge and experience to understand what's going on here, we can do it better. For example, when I see code like this, that use reduce, I'm going to refactor it to something like this. Just with only one difference, I'm going to change it to record because I don't want to, I don't want to, right? Let me, let me extend for a second. Because now I want to talk with you about the most important thing before we get into the last five minutes. Look at these four lines of code right here and look at this piece of code. Now, the first time I showed it in, in, in a meetup or something, one of the senior developers uh, just jump and say, hey, you're running over the, the records uh, array twice instead of doing it just one with reduce. And just this tiny example encapsulate my message, all right? In this use case, well, I think that this piece of code is make more sense to me. It's going to make me understand what's going on much faster. And yes, I'm going to loop this array twice because, well, this is JavaScript specifically. Maybe I'm going to have a million records here. I don't think it's going to get to this number. And honestly, I don't care. So yeah, I will run this array twice if it makes the code more readable. And if you can read it from top to bottom, validate records and valid filter and the record is valid and filter it again to know what it's invalid. And it's going to make you much faster understand what's going on. Because the sad truth is that in our day to day job, we read more code that we actually write. We spend more uh, I'm going to talk, I mean, by, by my name, I spend most of my time in front of the dev tools and not in front of the actual feature. And I think all of us now people are uh, afraid about uh, uh, writing verbose code. Um, people are afraid of being imperative because we kind of learning, uh, especially juniors, that imperative is wrong. All right. I want to tell you some, some, some myth. All right. Every keystroke you skip helps stop global warning. Uh, this is not true. All right. So if you save characters, if you type less, that's not, you're not going to save earth. A shorter code make the computer work uh, faster or the computer work easier. That's also not true. And you'll be surprised. A lot of juniors that just got into software development actually thinks that less code is better. All right. Programmers being paid by word count. Well, obviously, I don't know what about you. I'm not getting paid by how much things I type. All right. Complexity don't measure in lines of code. I've got a lot of colleagues. I've got a lot of other developers that I talk with that telling me that, well, this is complicated. It's got 1000 lines of code. And I say, why? Well, a thing can be very complicated with just two lines of code and very simple with 1000. Think about that. All right. It's all about naming. Start coding like you're talking. Start coding without shortcuts. Give yourself a chance. Pick up a feature. Let's look at some examples. All right. Everything is, is snapshots from real code. 
Cause D, new date. What is D? What is date? Is it today? Is it a creation date? Why? Why do we? Why do we even want to to call it D? All right. Let's look at this function between and a1, a2, a3. Stuff that I'm seeing in code reviews. Let's try to refactor this to something that looks like this. All right. Is value between range, value, start value, end value, boolean, start value. I agree much more characters but and you can argue with me if you jump into my source code and you see the bottom example would you understand it better than the top one all right set timeout restart and some random number what does this number mean so why not just saving it in a constant to make the code more readable so every time you see the set timeout you know that this is milliseconds in a day you don't need to read the numbers English. Let's look at this. Very popular example. This talk is going to end in two minutes, but I'm going to try to pump it into your brain and then summarize it very quickly. All right. Products, new map. Let's loop over products and get the key value. Why not take an extra second and just destructure from the product, the product ID and product so we can write sentences that make more sense. All right. Another example, very, very popular to write functions like the top one using the, the question mark nullable. Well, load user, if you've got a timeout and then make some decision. Well, once you replace it with default values, your code is just more readable. This time, yeah, it's a shortcut, but it's a meaningful shortcut because you do have a value. I'm going to share with you this slide, so don't worry. Um, I'm using objects all the time. If I'm working with TypeScript, it's going to be enums. But if not, why, why not encapsulate all of our strings in objects to give them context? So our code going to look like this, create button, button types dot something, size dot something instead of putting strings. As a reminder, all of these examples from real code. All right. Functions. Why to pass? 1000 argument to a function when we can wrap everything in an object and give these object types to make it readable and read as plain English. Create model options, modal options. Again, it's not shorter. This is the same amount of argument, but it's just arranged differently. And this is going to be the last example because I think this is a very, 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 very interesting one. Function set permission for users, accept an array of users and users for each user. Uh, first check if it's confirmed and then go ahead, fetch the permission for this user and set the permissions for these users. Now, if you ask a lot of people, uh, they're going to see here five lines of code. And I think honestly, it's clear enough. It's clear enough. I understand what's going on here, but I'm going to refactor it anyways. And I'm going to introduce much more code into it like this. Now let's take another look at this set permissions for users. Yeah, I can read it and I can understand it. And let's read the verbose version, get confirmed users. These functions just filter the users and check if it confirms or not set user permission for a single user. This function get a single user and set his permissions. Another function set permission for users. It get all the confirmed users and then run for each and set for each user his permissions. Yeah, I triple the amount of lines of code. But for me, I found this code much more readable, much more understandable, much more easy to debug and understand. And with descriptive, descript, uh, descriptive names and, you know, small enough to be digestible. All right. I've got plenty of this, but I'm going to stop right now. We don't use reduce. All right. The reduce function though is great. This is a re typical reduce function, validate record. All right. We've seen it in live. All right. Let me jump. I'm going to share all of this example. All right. We can do it forever, but I want to summarize because I've got like literally one minute. Readability is the only things that matters. That's my statement and a type of readability is is because it's that important. So it's two is. No, I'm kidding. It's a typo. Readability is the most 
important and the only thing that matters because as developers we need to debug our code we need to to understand our code don't spare keystrokes don't create shortcuts what's the point right what's the point if it's harder to me to read and understand what's going on or i need to spend more than nine second high level programming languages are english so let others read your code read other people code Hopefully this lighting talk got you a little bit inspired uh, and just, you know, hopefully I was a reminder for you that people take all of those ideas, get back to your source code and remember code. The only people who care about the code is us. We are humans. We need to read and understand what's going on. That's it.